Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great Wednesday so far, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Sarah Fairclough, and I'm a member of the Platform Solutions team. Today, I'm joined with Mark and, and a couple other team members who will be uh, giving us an overview of the March 2022 upgrade. So just a couple housekeeping items before I pass it over to them. The session is being recorded and it will be shared or uploaded rather to our YouTube page and sent out to your emails if you register for the session. It just takes about a week to get that sent out. As well, we love to hear your questions and hear from you. Um, we won't be answering the questions to the end, but feel free to post her out and we'll do our best to answer them all. And now I will pass it over to Mark. Okay, as Sarah Flaes introduced us, this is the uh, 2022 March upgrade. And I'm gonna go into a little more detail about what's included in this upgrade. So I'm gonna start here at wiki.smartsimple.com and I'm gonna go into upgrades. And this is where we list what's in all of our upgrades in case you wanna come here and look at it. And something I wanna point out is that if you come all the way down to the bottom here, we've got this thing called upgrades category. And so if I go there, you can actually see what was in the last category. And I'm bringing this up because uh, at the bottom, if there were any service packs after the upgrade, those were all listed here. So if you wanna see what came in a service pack, uh, you can look at that there. But let's go on to this upgrade. Uh, again, uh, just to reiterate, if you have any questions about anything I'm talking about, please just start putting them into the chat. And once uh, we've gone through this, we will take as much time as needed to answer those, but I will be answering the questions after this, uh, after going through the details first. Okay, so uh, right here, you can see where the upgrade is um, date uh, and when all of our upgrades uh, happen. Uh, depending on your hosting package, um, those upgrades can happen at different times, which are all listed there. Um, Maybe just zoom in a little bit, maybe that helps for people. All right. Uh, and also, um, again, uh, here's the different dates. Uh, and your backups are, um, sorry, the upgrade is applied to your backups two weeks in advance so that if, if you uh, want to check out some of the features and some of the changes, uh, you can go do that on your backups. All right. So uh, before I start again, one more thing is that this upgrade is a little smaller, I think, say, than the other upgrades. So you're going to notice it's a lot more bug tickets um, and more maintenance uh, than a lot of new shiny enhancements. So just uh, it'll be a little bit shorter than our usual upgrade webinar. So let's dig in. So the first thing that's going to happen automatically is uh, the classic options on signup pages, uh, which are these ones right here, uh, are now deprecated. Now, what that means is if I come into a system and I go to global settings, and let's say I go to the user signup page or the organization. Um, and if I edit one of these, there used to be a classic options tab here with those settings in them. Okay, If you're using those settings, you'll still see the tab. You'll still have access to those settings. But if you create a new page going forward, uh, you won't be able to turn those on anymore because uh, they are deprecated. Okay, so if, you have, if you're using it now, uh, it'll still exist for you. But going forward, you won't be able to uh, start using those options anymore. Just a minor update, just to let you know. So on the message queue, so if I come in my system and I go to the message queue, here's where I can see the emails that have been sent out from my system. Well, to make this a little bit easier, we've included a button here to view the message. So I can come in here and I can view that message and I can see what was sent out. So just a little bit of a convenience feature there, I'm just letting you know we've added this button here to view that message. So those are the mandatory things that are gonna happen automatically. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's not a very big list of, of changes there. Uh, but next I want to talk about is the minor or the uh, optional things, the things that you kind of turn on. Um, so uh, the first thing we did uh, a small enhancement. If you never use the question set builder, uh, question set builder, what it does, let me show you that. Actually, I'm going to come into a, a UTA here. What question set builder does is on a level one, such as a grant or whatever you want to make your level one, I can set up uh, all the, the question set builder. So um, let me just show you that. So here I've got a question set builder where I've, I've made a whole bunch of questions. Uh, and these are dependent for just this one level one. And then when I create activities from this level one, it'll ask those questions. So we've always had this functionality. That way you can have unique questions uh, to ask the people who are applying that are unique just to that level one. I don't have to make a whole bunch of custom fields for those. I'm going to pick a different one just to demonstrate this. Let me grab, um, see which one was it I wanted. Or maybe I'll make one. Um, 
There you go. I'll take this one. Whatever. Okay. Was that the one I had? Bear with me a second here. Uh, that's what I had. All right. Anyway, um, I just got to get a different one. Sorry, guys. My apologies. I'll take this, this one right here. So I'm going to make this one and I'm going to make some questions on it. So I'm going to say, um, for my predefined questions here, I'm going to make uh, just a uh, text box number. I'm going to say one plus one. Uh, and I'm going to, the correct answer is two, and I'm going to score this as one. So if I save that, then when I create um, an activity or a level two, so I'll just come in here and I'll make a new activity. Uh, here's my question. So it shows up right here. And if I say it's one plus one is one, because I'm not very good at math, uh, then what it does is it tells me I'm incorrect. It's two. So this is a way you can make like a quick and easy quiz. Um, and you can score that quiz automatically. So. Uh, if people are interested, I can go uh, at the end, I can go back and show exactly how I set that up, but it's just something new. Um, we also added the ability to change uh, the, the color of the type uh, and status for level ones. So let me back that up again as well. So if I come into a normal UTA, we've got this thing here called the type icon. Okay. And the type icon always showed the status color. So in the type, I can pick this icon. So I can say, this is, this is the type of arts and culture grant. And I used a paintbrush for that icon. And on the level twos and the level threes, you could pick the color, whether you want it to be status or type. But on the level one, it was always the status. So we've just added that ability that now you can pick. Uh, I can come in here. So I'll just show you that. And if I didn't want to use the type color, I can come down here on this list view, on a list view by list view basis. I can say, change it to the status color. And I save. And now that icon is using the status color. So all the drafts are blue, for example. Now, this isn't new, but something you may not know is if for some reason uh, you don't want to see this icon here, you can easily turn that off. So I'm just going to show you that too over here. So all you need to do is come here and you can see it says hide type icon. You just toggle that on and save, it'll hide that uh, role completely. So, you know, you got lots of options here, personally preference, whether you wanted to show based, color based on type based on status, or whether you want to hide this entirely. Again, just put uh, any questions in the chat uh, as we go. Uh, IP restrictions. We used to have uh, IP restrictions. We've changed the way this works. So let me give you an example here. We let, Let's say your project managers or somebody internally, uh, you only want them to log in from work. So what I can do is I can go uh, to global settings, I can go to those roles. So I'll, I'll go to the role and let's say this is an internal role here. Let's pick a role, it doesn't matter. And what I can do is I can see here's my IP address and I can stick it in there and say, okay, if, that, if I knew that was the IP address for the office, I could put it in there. I can put a semicolon separated list and this becomes an allow list. So anyone with this role trying to log in, they have to log in as normal, their username and password. But um, after that, it'll do a secondary check where it's like, hey, you also have to be uh, coming from this IP address. Now, we all know that it, it's, it's possible to um, kind of fake IP addresses and stuff. So this is just an added security feature uh, that you can use. Um, all right, if you're using ORCID, which is used by our researchers, uh, you can pull in your ORCID profile into the system. Uh, what we've added is uh, once you've pulled that in, if you decide you no longer want to use that integration or keep pulling that into your profile, uh, you can unlink that. And so we've added here the ability to kind of customize the messaging around the unlinking process. So just something to be aware of. Um, advanced data tables, or for those of you who have been with Smart Simple a long time, we used to call these XMLs a long time ago. Uh, the advanced data table. So this is again, um, it's moving, this, this field is probably one of the most complicated fields to configure within the system. And so we're trying to make that easier. And so this is the first step towards doing that. So let me show you how these get set up in the first place. So I'm going to go into a record. Uh, it doesn't matter which record. And I, let's say I want to enter a budget, and I'm using the advanced data table for it. So here's my budget. I open it up. I can put my budget information in. 
I've got this information in here. I'm just going to display text and variables to show it. And then when I print that PDF, I can actually see that. So if you're printing, you would do it the way you normally do it. And that way is, I'll just show you how, how we normally do that. Normally, we put a template into here uh, from the wiki. There's a wiki article explaining it. And we would put, if I come down here, we would put variables in for the sections that we created using the section builder. And if you want to print it, that's the way you would still do it. But if you're not going to print this, we have a more simplified way of doing it. So I'll show you here. So what we added was a page layout. So if you go to a sign up page or a, or a login page, you see we have this page layout. And if you use the page layout default, you don't have to see any HTML. You don't have to edit any HTML. And the system handles all that for you. So we've added that here. So now I can have the default. I can specify the page title, the instructions. If I go into the section builder and I click on a section here, again, I can specify the section title, the section instructions, and a display order. So that tells the system where to put uh, each section. And if I do that, let's turn this off. I'll show you what it looks like now. Then with very minimal effort, I have a quick budget in here um, where I can just enter my text in however I want. Uh, and do the same type of thing. But I didn't have to look at any HTML or do any of that stuff. The only caveat to this is, of course, if you, if you want to print it, um, then you still have to use the traditional method. Now, I do plan to and hopefully enhance this further so that it will, will be able to use it for printing as well, uh, but that'll be coming later. So first step towards making this much easier, um, right there. Uh, Again, another convenience feature here. So this is to do with uh, translations. So let me show you this. So let's say um, I've, I've set up my, my custom fields and uh, I set them up for English US, but uh, I, want, I want now to put in translations for uh, English UK. So what I would do is if I open up one of these, uh, so here I have it and I've got my field here, and I've got some instructions, let's say, and I want to translate this to uh, for English UK. So what I can do is here, I come in here and I can pick English UK, for example, and you can see that it's automatically going to pull the English US in as placeholder text. But that's not that helpful because if I start typing, it's gone. So what I can do now is I can populate from field and that just pulls it over for me. And then I can modify it and change my S's to Z's or however I need to. Uh, likewise, it just kind of gives you some context. So again, that's that's a new way, just kind of populate it over and then you can modify it here. And there's lots of other ways to do translations, but this is a, a convenience feature if you're doing it that way. All right. If you're making a workflow uh, that's going to create a new activity, typically you would always create a UTA role for that. And that way you'd use that UTA role to assign the person to the new activity you just created. Uh, well, now you don't have to do that. Uh, if you want to just create a new activity and assign it directly to the owner or to the person standard field, uh, you have those options. So that can save some people some time. Uh, two other items here. The, um, we've added the ability to pre-process the JSON uh, files in, in the auto loader. So if that's what you're doing, uh, it's there. And also we extended the SS get the variable syntax and that's to support uh, Dun & Bradstreet API calls. So, um, so those are the things that are gonna happen optionally. Now, a few things that I just wanna walk through for administrators and just some other changes that we made. Uh, I mean, I'll do that now. So uh, you can now use the delete method if you're doing a, a web services RESTful request, uh, which is new. Uh, and again, we're talking about the maintenance. We did do some cleanup uh, in the, on the behind the scenes with the connectors and the database schema. Uh, there should be no front end uh, impact on that, but it, uh, other than maybe a little better performance, but um, it is something we did. Um, we also improved the password rendering. So if you ever set up the SMTP relay and there's a few other areas in the system, when you type the password and you save, it didn't have a visual indicator. So we've added that visual indicator, but we've also added an edit button. So you can see that there was something there was saved. And if you want to edit it, you now have to use that button. So just to be aware for our system admins. Something that I find really interesting, and I. You know, I just want to kind of talk about for a second is the media library and the rotation of thumbnails. So if you've never seen this before, I don't know, let me open this up and show you. For the supporting documents, sorry. So we've got 
the upload multiple file uh, custom field can render two ways. By default, it renders this way down here. But if I want, I can toggle on media library. And if I toggle on media library, I can see the images, I can watch the videos in line, I can listen to the audio in line. Uh, it, it adds a whole bunch of other functionality. So if we toggle that on and I upload the images, there was a bug uh, where the thumbnails weren't rotating uh, as expected. So again, just to give you some background here, when I click on this image, when I upload an image here and I click on it, I'm showing you the image as it was uploaded, right? So this is the big image, the, you know, maybe it's 50 megabytes or whatever it is uh, here. But if I was to load in a whole bunch of 50 megabyte images here, your pages would take forever. So what we do is we take that image and we make a smaller version at 512 pixels wide. And that's what we put here. So there was a problem where um, when people are taking a picture, if you're saying taking a picture uh, with your camera sideways uh, or something like that, sometimes it didn't rotate as expected. Uh, and that's because it wasn't respecting what's called the EXIF data. So EXIF is kind of metadata, and I don't go really down a rabbit hole here, I apologize, um, which basically tells where the ground is. When you take a picture, that, that information gets stored in the image. So anyway, it's fixed. It's a long story short. Um, oh, but uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because if you've uploaded uh, images before and you saw that they weren't rotated correctly, you just have to upload that image again. And then when the thumbnail gets regenerated, it'll be fixed. Um, all right. Uh, the other thing to note is that uh, the way this works is because uh, you upload the image, it's there right away, but it takes about five minutes or so before the thumbnail gets generated. So uh, there is a bit of a delay in between uploading and seeing the thumbnail. Uh, you'll see an image right away, but it flips to the thumbnail once the thumbnail is ready. So that's how that all works in the background. All right, user groups. So we added an ability uh, to restrict who can see the user group settings page. Okay, And I'm just going to show you what that is, because maybe everyone doesn't know about user groups. So when I'm coming here and I want to associate a, a user with this grant or this level one, uh, I can click on groups and I can say, I want to sign team alpha in the review, in the role of reviewer. So I can do this and then I can add them and my whole team alpha gets added right to this ticket to do a review on it. Uh, the way you set that up is I go to global settings, I go to users and user groups. So here's where I had set that up. I click here to add it. Once I've added it, uh, I can add whatever users I want and then I can pull them there. Uh, and, and put them on, attach them to any record I want uh, in the level one. Um, so anyway, the we've added a new setting. So I go to global settings, uh, security, system feature permissions, features. Sorry about that, guys. Apologies. Um, and if I look at user, user group manager right there. So uh, this new setting restricts who can get access to modifying that. All right. Um, all right. Oh, if you've got an automatic uh, schedule, archive schedule set up uh, that used to run on the hour, uh, it now will run 15 minutes after the hour. Uh, there's just a lot of tasks running on the hour. So uh, that's again, to improve performance slightly. Um, so just be aware of the archive will run out 15 minute mark instead of on the hour. Uh, if you have a shortcut to an organization profile or user profile, so again, I'm going to show you that. Here I am. I go to my profile. Here's my user profile. So we have a view profile page, which is this one, and we have an edit profile page, which is this one. And I'm using the standard field container, so it may look a little different than, than yours. But there are, there are actually two pages in the system. And when you create a link, you pick whether you want the person to go to the edit or the view. Now, if you've chosen in your shortcut to go to the edit page, then um, some in some scenarios, you may have gotten access denied if you didn't have access to edit that user. So if you had a shortcut that was doing that, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to automatically flip you to the view uh, page for that person. So you wouldn't want to get the access denied if you don't have edit permission. As long as you have view permission, it'll just drop you over to the view. All right. Uh, you can use the system call with user workflows. And again, back to the idea of maintenance, uh, we updated a whole bunch of, of libraries that we were using, um, again, just to keep everything up to date. 
Uh, we also fixed an issue with translations where in some scenarios it wasn't uh, saving properly and increase some encryption and validation. Uh, on the advanced um, advanced search, you can now search by modified by uh, on the level one. Um, and there's something else here to note is that for your autoloader and your configuration, uh, your autoloader uh, configuration error logs, uh, sorry, the autoloader process and your configuration error logs, it's now going to show three months worth of records. So just be aware of that. Um, moving on down, almost there. The uh, notifications for your auto loader and your reports. So you can now make sure you um, defi define who you want the from address to be on these. So what I'm talking about here is if I go to an auto loader, let's say, oops, wrong one, go to auto loader. If I go to an auto loader, for example, and I open this up and I go to process. So if this auto loader fails to, to uh, you know, fails run as expected, here you can turn this on and you can say who you want to get emailed about that, right? Same with some of your reports. Um, so that's how you set up who, who you want to send it to. But who the email comes from is defined somewhere else. So for a lot of these automated emails that just come out of the system, you can define who it's from. So if you have a general mailbox or something you want to send it from, uh, you can do that. I go to communications, I go to email options and security. And right here, it says enable default from address. And this is where you turn this on, you just specify that. And then emails coming from the system, those the kind of notification emails will come from this one. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, oh, we fixed a, um, a bug with the description. So let me show you that. This is back on the upload multiple file field. And again, everyone may not know about the description. Uh, so I'll show you that again. Um, so here I am, uh, custom field is the upload multiple file field, and you can see here I've got a description. So I can come in here and I can type whatever I want and I can save uh, that field, all right? The way you turn this, there was a problem if you were using single quotes in here, it wasn't saving properly. So that's been fixed. But the way you turn this on, in case you've never turned that on, I'm gonna go to that field for a second. So here's the upload multiple file storage field. And if I come down here, uh, here's where I would turn on that. So I can enable the description, upload those files. And if I want, I can make it mandatory as well. Um, mandatory uh, means that when you try and submit that thing, the submit the application, it'll give you a warning that says, hey, you didn't fill that in. Um, and we were talking about Media Library earlier. Where is that? Um, oh, I don't know. There it is. Enable media library. So if I wanted to show the videos where people can watch them in line, uh, that's where you would turn that on. All right. Um, yeah, we did some cleanup with the test production. That that's only applies to people that have multiple uh, environments. Um, the associate parent is now available for archiving activities. And the last thing I want to talk about is the UTA file search. So uh, UTA administrators will now have access to this. So if you've never seen this before, let me show you what this is. So here I am in a list view, and there's a button right here called search files. So what I can do is I can search a specific custom field across all those files. So in this case, my custom fields, other documents for something. So for example, I'm gonna search for the word test. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through that custom field and find every Word document, every PDF, um, every text document, and it looks at not only in the title, but also in the body content for that. And from here, I can click on it and see the actual uh, thing, or I can jump right to the record and figure out, oh, this is where they were talking about uh, almonds or something, whatever I'm looking for, right? Um, so, and if you've ever seen how that's set up, I'll show you how we, how we set that up as well. So, um, first of all, there's a few things to do here. So first, uh, if I go to the custom field itself, actually, I think, uh, and I, I called it other documents. Let's see, other documents. So on the custom field itself, you have to say that you want this to be searchable. So if I come down here, there's a button here that says file index. So I turn that on for the custom fields. I want people to be able to search. Uh, and then once I've done that, I get a button up here where I can say file index. And because I've just turned this on, what I have to do is I have to index all the files. So I would turn this on and I would hit save. And, and 
then there it goes. And so what that's going to do is it's going to go through that field and it's going to index all the files that have been uploaded against that field. Now, going forward, uh, as soon as I upload a file, it will get indexed. But because I turn this on now, I have to do that the first time. Uh, and that's going to index those. The other thing I need to do, and um, let's see here, I always forget where I put this. Yeah. So I also enable file search on the UTA. So if you turn this on here, uh, Enable file search, then that will show up um, right up here. So those are the two things you have to do uh, to be able to search uh, all those within all those documents for specific text, um, as well as for the names of those documents. So I know that was a really quick run through. Uh, I know it was a little shorter than possible, but um, let's open it up for questions and see what uh, what people want to know about this upgrade. And, and just a reminder, like I said, um, as service packs become available, uh, they will be showing up kind of here at the bottom. I do thank everyone for coming and joining us. I know this is a, a higher level technical talk, but uh, and we yeah, do we always appreciate everyone. everyone taking the time. Okay. Seems, <laughs> seems like we're good. Okay. okay. Thanks everyone. We hope you have a great rest of your day.